Hey, what's up you guys? Nick here. I dragged my big large format camera up from the basement, brought it up here because the light in the kitchen is absolutely perfect. So I know we couldn't shoot video at the distillery while I was shooting my tintype booth because of copyright music and stuff like that. So I brought this up here and we're actually going to shoot it outside today at the tree. We got about 19 inches of snow over the last couple days, so it's going to be kind of fun to do that. But I kind of wanted to give over the basics of using a large format camera before we actually go out and shoot a couple of tin types. And then in the next video, I'll develop them, as well as develop a few older photos that I've had sitting around for a while that I probably should have gotten to a while ago. So I'm just going to scoop this guy over. I'm going to show you this. This is a film holder. It holds two shots of 4x5 film or tin plates. Whereas your standard little tiny SD card, I mean, an SD card's the size of a postage stamp and it holds thousands of photos, whereas this holds two with its giant size. I also have with me is those two plates that I showed you the other day in the other video. I'm going to show you how to load this in the light. Then I'm actually going to run off to my garage and load it with some actual plates so we can go outside and shoot it real quick and you guys have an idea of what it looks like. Now, I did discuss that the, these plates here are a little bit too wide for the film holder, so we are going to cut them a little bit and modify them. That way they fit into the 4x5 film holder. Now these are plastic ones, they're Fidelity Elites. You can get them plastic and wood, and you can also get other holders for shooting on glass as some dry plates and even wet plates you can shoot on glass. So let's go ahead and take care of this. So on the top, you wanna to make sure both your little notches, these guys here, are done and it unlocks it. You slide your covers off, and that opens up the bottom like so. So I'm gonna to test to see if this actually fits beforehand. And on the inside of this, there's two little metal tabs on the inside that you actually slide your plate into. Oh, this one's already been cut to size. So that slides in there like that. Close the flap. And I have these marks as exposed and then black means not exposed. That way if I'm shooting a bunch of photos at once, I know which plates I've already used. So then slide it into place and lock it down with these little metal tabs. Same thing with the other side. And now this is a loaded film holder. Now once the film holder is loaded, you can't pull these slides off without ruining your film unless you're in complete darkness. So yeah, once your plates are all loaded up, you load it into the back of the camera once you get it into focus. And we're gonna go over that real quick. So a large format camera is actually very, very simple. We have our lens, we have our adjustments for focus, and then this one actually has up and down as well as tilt, but we're gonna do that in another video. Now, on the back of the large format camera is this glass plate. This is called a ground glass plate, and this is actually your viewfinder when you light up your photo. So you'll get the dark cloth pinched in here and over you, it's like a black sheet. So you use this piece of ground glass here, and it captures the light coming in from the lens, and that's how you bring your image into focus as well as frame your image. Once you're done framing the image, turn, you close the lens and you slide your film holder right into the back like that. Now, there's a common misconception in all the old movies of the photographer under the dark cloth saying cheese and taking the photo. There's no reason behind that because you can't see anything once that's in. So once your film holder is locked into place, you remove the light cover from the film holder, and I usually put it right there, and you take your photograph. Then what I'll do is I'll flip it from non-exposed to black. That way, it's completely safe to use again. Then I'll lock that down so it doesn't accidentally pull out. And that slides right out. And as you can see, exposed versus non-exposed. So I kind of want to give you guys an idea of what that image looks like when you're under the dark cloth. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll bring it into focus. And everything's upside down. Everything's super hard to do. Voila, and you guys are now under the dark cloth. That's actually what the view I see is when I do it. Now you can see that the tree is actually upside down. And I'm gonna show you some neat little tricks real quick. So when we focus it, we run those two knobs, just like that. And then actually another cool thing about this, and it doesn't mess up perspective. I really hope the audio is working because it's covered by the dark cloth, but when I move the front up and down, it actually changes the perspective even further. So I'm going to move it up, and you should be able to see more of the tree.
just like that. And now I'm going to move it back down and you'll see more of the ground and more of the bottom of the tree. And that's all the way down. So I'm going to put it back right in the mid-range, right where we had it at the beginning. So that's it. That's your grid system right on that ground glass. You line up your photo in that just as you would a normal camera. Get everything within focus. Make sure everything looks how you want it. You can use all your adjustments, your tilt, your up, down, all of that stuff to get everything in focus that you want in focus. And then you line up the shot itself. And once you do that, you actually close the lens, which there's a button in the front. And now it's going to go black, just like that. So once you get everything lined up the way that you want it lined up and you close that lens as we did, you load your film holder like we discussed earlier, cock your shutter, and then take your photograph. And that's it. That's all there is to it with this big guy here. So let's go take a couple tin types, you guys. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome to my winter wonderland. I hope that lens doesn't fog up while we're doing this. But... We're gonna hide and shoot two tin types and I So I'm actually gonna run over to that tree and do a light reading. I use a Siconic light meter. It is the L308B model. I got this on eBay. I'll see if I can find one and link it for you guys. It works really, really well for me. And again, you, you gotta take a bunch of measurements in order to do this, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'll show you my conversion table for using the ISO, which I think we're shooting at about one ISO. I'm gonna try not to get the sun in it because the sun it'll white out the plates and then the plates will crumble and it'll be a nightmare so I'm gonna take care of this real quick so we measured EV 10 which is the amount of light that's out here and I'll do a whole video on EVs and what they mean so I'm gonna bring out my conversion chart I actually had to write this down one ISO at aperture f11 at an EV of 10 says 12 seconds so we're shooting at one ISO, so 12 seconds would be 24 seconds at 0.5. So we're gonna go ahead and line this up, take the shot. We're gonna do it in fast motion. You guys can get the whole idea of how I go about doing this, so. So now that I have the shot lined up, we're gonna go ahead and load the film holder like we discussed a little bit ago. I have it lined up at the tree because I wanna try to see if we can get that cool little grainy texture with the snow on it and all that. The snow, I don't know how it's gonna white out. We might shoot it for a few less seconds. So since we're shooting at f11, I'm gonna move this down to f11. I'm going to close our lens. I'm actually gonna put this on timed. So I hit the button once and it opens it. And I hit it again and it closes it. And that's a lot like manual mode with the jolly look as we discussed in that video. And I will link that up. But yeah, that's the little cocking mechanism. So let's go ahead and take the shot, you guys. So like we discussed, we're gonna be shooting at 12 seconds. I have the plates in my pocket. We're going to shoot on number three first. And before I pull the sunshade, I will actually make sure that the lens is closed. That way we don't ruin the shot. I'm going to recheck my math to make sure. So we got EV10 at F11. EV10 is 12 seconds at one ISO. And these were shooting a little bit fast when I did the tin type booth. These plates at this point are about a week and a half old. So they're probably about 1, 1.5 ISO. So we'll go ahead and remove the slide holder. I almost forgot to time it. And then I'll pull out a stopwatch, usually on my phone. So one thing I forgot to mention is with this camera, if I want to go from shooting a, the tree or a portrait to landscape, I just turn the ground glass sideways and light up my shot as I had before. So this one's a little more complicated. The tree is all in the same light, whereas the house over there that we're shooting, let me turn this, is in several types of light. I'm gonna take some light readings of the direct sunlight and kind of get an idea of where we should be shooting. We're also going to be shooting at a much smaller f-stop to try to make up for the amount of bright sun there is out here. So we were measuring about nines and tens the whole way through. So I'm actually gonna put this at F64. That is my smallest aperture. And that'll let the least amount of light in. So let's do our conversion. So EV9 and 10 is about what it's reading. 
Okay, so I didn't have the calculation in my notebook for fast reference. So a shot at F64 is 13 minutes with what we're, our setup is right now and such a low ISO. So instead we're gonna shoot at F32 and it's about a three and a half minute exposure. So we're gonna go ahead and get this set up. I'll get everything lined up. We'll take the shot and then I'll see how it comes out. So now that we're loading the camera at a different angle, we're gonna go with number four because number four has not been exposed. Number four out. And like I said in previous videos, I've done a lot of landscape photography digitally and with film, but not really with tintypes. It's a much different process because this doesn't pick up any red light and it's only blue light sensitive. And the sun really washes things out. So I don't know how these photos are gonna turn out. I really hope they turn out great. So the next time you guys see me, we'll probably be in the kitchen kind of doing our last little overview and then I'll see you again next week. Thanks again. Hey you guys, welcome back into the kitchen. That was a three minute shot. Again, I have no idea how these are gonna come out. So yeah, so we'll do the development video next week and I've got some old photos to develop as well as those two. I hope those come out all right. Kind of a guessing game. I don't shoot a lot of landscape with dry plate. I mostly use digital and film as I said earlier. So thank you again you guys so much for joining me for this let's shoot some tin type videos. So please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification. You guys have a wonderful day. Thanks again for joining me in my kitchen. Much better light than the basement.